Now let's go. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm your host Isaiah as always and today we're going to be predicting week six. We're already on week six of the 2022-2023 NFL season. Let's get into it. Okay, so starting off on Thursday Night Football, we have an absolute snooze test between the Washington Commanders and the Chicago Bears. Both of these teams have looked so bad. The offenses have looked completely incompetent. Washington coming off a close win. Both of these teams are actually coming off pretty heartbreaking losses. Um, Bears obviously coming when Cam Dantzler completely stripped one of the receivers. I don't know who it was. And then Wentz throwing an interception at the one-yard line. I'm going to say a low-scoring game here. I am going to take Washington to win in a 20 to, you know what, I'll keep it 18. 20 to 18 fashion. You know what, no, I'm being too generous on these offenses. I'll say 15 to 12, we get another field goal contest. I am not going to be watching this game. Up next, we got the final London game of the season. The San Francisco 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons. It, I mean, San Fran has looked unbeatable recently. I mean, they aren't just beating the teams they've been beating. They are beating them badly. And it hasn't been pretty for anyone. Hasn't been any pretty for anyone. The San Fran team, might I say, is not healthy yet. When they get healthy, I don't know what they're gonna do. San Fran wins in a pretty blowout fashion, um, thirty to twenty. How about that, Atlanta? That's pretty fair. Up next, we got the Seattle Seahawks taking on the Arizona Cardinals. This game could get postponed to five o'clock, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the upset here. I'm taking Seattle. I'm on board with the take, 33-25. I'm on the take that Geno is better than Russ. He literally has looked like the better quarterback. I do not care what people say. He has looked like the better quarterback. And I'm going to stand by that take. Geno is better than Russ. So, yeah. I think it's a pretty fair take to say that Geno Smith, take, Geno Smith beats Arizona at home in one of the hardest places to play, putting Seattle at a winning record. That is crazy. Up next, we got the Carolina Panthers taking on the Los Angeles Rams. I said this last week. I don't know if I actually said it, but last week was a must-win game for the Rams, but they could lose. This is a must-win game for the Rams that they can't lose. I'm going to give them a minute for the doubt, Los Angeles. I'll let you drop 30 on them and 13. Carolina's offenses look bad. You have to win this game, though. Without this win, I don't know what to say. I'm going to skip this game game because it's like the best game of the week besides a certain another game that should have been on primetime. I'm going to skip the Jets and the Packers. This is a really intriguing game. This is definitely a could be a trap game for the Packers, but I think they bounce back. I think they bounce back. I think they, they'll take a 23-17 win. I think that's pretty fair. I think they can bounce back after a heartbreaking loss. Jets look good. Jets look good against my Dolphins, I'll admit, but that was a very injured Dolphins team. And... I'm going to say it, a lot of those touchdowns were in garbage time. So yeah, they're going to face a real quarterback this week. They have not played a real quarterback this week. They're going to get one. This is going to be the true test. Win at New York, New Jersey. Um, I said the Bengals and the Saints. I've been so conflicted about this game. This seems like such a trap game waiting to happen for the Bengals. But I am going to take the Bengals in a 20-17 to 17 ball game. I have a lot of teams putting up 17. I have two. Well, we'll stick with it. 20 to 17. This game could be a trap game. Something about it. Cam Jordan might just run through that entire Bengals offensive line. He might, they might be able to drop 10 guys back in coverage, and Cam Jordan's still going to be getting to Joe Burrow in a second. Um, next, we got the Baltimore Ravens taking on the New Jersey Giants. Good job, New Jersey. Good job, Giants. You won last week. Okay. I'll give you a round of applause. You've been proving me wrong. But you're not getting that apology for me predicting you 4-13 and 13 until you win that fifth game. And that ain't happening this week. This is a, I think, I saw someone, I saw Wyatt's World sum it up perfectly. Why am I predicting these weird scores? Give them a normal score. I saw Wyatt's World predict, I saw Wyatt's World sum up this game perfectly. It's an offense that the Giants have not seen before. They haven't faced a completely mobile quarterback yet. And actually, the Ravens defense has not looked great. And I think Saquon's going to have another fantastic game. Another apology. I'm sorry for saying Saquon's going to be bad. But yeah, I think, I think the New Jersey Giants take their second loss of the season. But don't be overwhelmed. Schedule's easy. I think you guys could sneak into the playoffs. It's crazy to say. 
Up next, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, so... Last time I did this, the last time I said it, put a score, that was a blowout, and said nothing, the 49ers lost to the Bears, so I feel like I should say something. Um, the Bucks have a very good offense. It's starting to click. Their defense is elite, just like Buffalo's. And Matt Canada runs the most stale and boring offense that is completely predictable. Hooray. Right. Up next, we got the 4-1 and one Minnesota Vikings heading into South Florida. Injuries are still really looking bad for Miami. I don't think Teddy's going to play. And everything has gone downhill since I predicted Miami to start winning. So I'm going to predict Minnesota to win in a slower defensive game, 23-16. I think we're going to take our third straight loss. But you know what? I'm not going to worry. I'm going to start worrying. But that's okay. Up next, we have Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, this is going to be a really good game. They're not really good in the sense. Jacksonville obviously coming off a loss against Houston. Houston kind of owns them though, so that should that should just say something about the current state of your organization. Yeah, I still like. What am I trying to say? I still don't like Indianapolis, so I'm gonna take Jacksonville. I'm gonna take them in a low-scoring NFC South battle. There we go. I think that's the lowest scoring. No, no. Washington Bears is. No, no, this is a lowest scoring game. I'm going to take Jacksonville. I'm not too sure on that one, though. Up next, we got the New England Patriots taking on the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland almost won last week. Props to them. And I think they are going to take the win this week. This is also another very intriguing game. That is not the right score. I'm going to give them a one point win over New England. To give them a 26 to 27 win over New England to put them at 500. This is a very intriguing team who has played every game to the wire. I think every game they played has been close, regardless of who they're playing. If they win, it's close. If they lose, it's close. And I think that they're just going to do enough with Nick Chubb to win. We're going to skip this game. This is the game of the week. Um, and then we got a Monday Night Football. This is the final time we'll have to see Broncos on Monday Night Football. Thank God it's over. Please, Chargers, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. Mop the floor against them. Beat them. Beat beat them. Bad. No. I'm going to give you an extra point. Beat them so badly that NFL will never put the Broncos on Monday Night Foot on primetime ever again. Please. Beat them so badly. I just want to see that. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. The only concern here is that run defense has not looked good. But other than that, just absolutely blow them out. And I know Denver has a good defense, but offense has looked bad. And unlike Indianapolis, Chargers are going to capitalize on those mistakes. Those interceptions that Russell Wilson throws, that's a Justin Herbert touchdown right there. There, Those fumbles that Melvin Gordon makes it, boom, that's an Austin Eckler touchdown. Every, just blow them out the water, LA. Make... Make the NFL never put this sorry team in primetime ever again. Sorry about the little rant. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on to the two really good games this week. We got Eagles and Dallas. Dallas is on a four-game win streak. Eagles is on a five-game win streak, looking to continue being undefeated. I am going to take the Eagles, but I think it's going to be a really close game. And the only reason I'm taking this game, Eagles, is because it's in Philadelphia. It's going to be a... No, why am I giving them so many points? No, no, no. This is going to be a really, it's going to be, I'm going to give them Eagles a one point win. It's going to be a really close game. And I think Dallas is just going to be just that close. Dallas's defense has looked fantastic this year. They really did show it against the Rams. And the Eagles, and the Eagles have just been good on both sides of the ball. They should, they can win in a defensive battle they did against the Cardinals last week. So yeah, this is going to be a very interesting game because with the outcome of this game, We'll determine, see, we'll determine if the Eagles stay undefeated. I think Dallas, hold on, I'm just going to check something. Dallas will take the one seed in the NFC if they win this game, according to my predictions, of course. Actually, no. If Dallas does win this game, they will be the one seed, no matter, regardless of what happens. There's a lot on the line in this game, and these two teams meet later in the year in Dallas. That's going to be a different story. This game is going to be very close, so very looking forward to watch to watching this game and actually a primetime game. And here's the game that should have been a primetime game. 
This is between the two best teams in the league. But even disregarding that, because obviously they can't just predict who the best teams in the league are going to be, or else they wouldn't have put Denver on primetime so much. Huh, back to the Denver primetime thing. One, two, three, four. We're in week seven. Sorry. It's just a little bit of a rant. Okay. This is the rematch of the game of the year last year. There is so much at stake here. Not just for seeding, not just for that. These two teams hate each other when they play each other. Each other. Last time these two teams met, last season, they met each other twice. Buffalo blew them out of the water. This is when Chiefs were on that little dry streak. Chiefs beat, meet them right back of the playoffs in Arrowhead, where the stadium is loud. They win in an insane fashion. Completely changed the overtime rules as well. This game is a big determiner on who is the best team in the league. This game will determine that, actually. And, in all honesty, I'm going to take the Kansas City Chiefs. In a close game, give me a, you know, I'm, I'm going high scoring. 45-42 victory for KC. Slim, narrow, slim, narrow victory for KC. High scoring. Last time these two teams meant the score was 36-42. But these offenses are going to go back and forth and back and forth. Actually, no. I think I'm giving them too many points. I'll say, I'll say 33-36. Both of these defenses have actually been pretty decent, actually. And, yeah. I'm going to take KC in a slim margin. I could see Buffalo winning this game. But I think KC is going to win in Arrowhead. I think they will take the one seed in the AFC as of now. And we're going to be looking at a whole different playoff picture. It's going to be an insane game, and I'm super stoked to watch it. I'm honestly more stoked than I am to watch the Dolphins-Vikings game. All right, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.